All right, so what country are you and your family members originally from? Well, I'm from, we are from uh, Africa, Tanzania, but uh, my father's from Burundi and my mother's from Rwanda, and I was born in Congo. Okay, right. so why did your family leave Congo? And, I mean, uh, during 1994, uh, the genocide in Rwanda had gotten a little bit intense, uh, and I was born in 1996. That's right when um, uh, a dictator in Rwanda came up and took over, and uh, he pretty much sent army to find every Hutus who went to Congo. Uh, after that, my parents decided to run to Tanzania, where uh, I went, like my family, my mother, my mom, my, my mom and my dad ran down there whenever I was, um, I believe, two months old, and uh, I grew up pretty much in Tanzania since then. All right, so who all came with you when y'all immigrated over here and what all did you leave behind back there? Well, I came here with my, just the family members, meaning my mom and my dad and my uh, five siblings. Um, what was the second part? Uh, what did you leave behind? Well, um, I, I left like grandparents, other family members like cousins, and brother-in-law and that kind of stuff. So I mean, I pretty much just left with the people that I lived with. I lived with my family, that's it. But um, that's, and I left like some of the, uh, my dad is, you know, farms and stuff, stuff that he owned, that he worked for hard for. But we knew that once we get here, things will be better, things will be different. So right. when it comes to feeling bad about it, it was all right. It's, we're gonna find a better life here, so. Right. So what lifestyle changes did your family encounter? In comes to the uh, work, uh, my parents both now work at Tyson. Um, however, I am a student, which is difficult to go to school in my country. So my siblings are going to school. My uh, my parents are working every day just to try to you know have some money to pay rents and stuff. So I mean, that's different from my country because my country you don't have to pay rents. You have to pay electricity bills and all that stuff because you don't have any of this stuff. Right. So. It is, there's so much change um, from my country to here, from the everyday life, pretty much. All right. Um, so what was your first impression of the United States and how did it change? Well, at first I kind of thought it was gonna be way too easy, like, because when you're in my country, they talk about America, it's like this heaven that only, you know, the happy people live there, the, the success people live here. Uh, and then as I you know, started high school, I realized it's not that way. I have to work hard for everything I want. Like, I mean, go to school, take care of business, do the best that I can do. And that's something that before I came over here, I didn't expect I would be doing. So I mean, uh, there was some good stuff that I was told, there's some stuff that I was told that was not true meaning that you're supposed to come to America and just relax and have the free stuff, so, yeah. So how were you treated once you got here, like, while you were learning English and with your accent and stuff? I I was treated with uh, the most respect and love. And, like, I believe that everybody who came to my house to visit, they had so much love. Uh, they wanted up. And I remember, like, 2010 when I arrived here with me and my family, uh, we were given tutors to teach us how to speak English, how to write English, how to do our homeworks, because I, I started in eighth grade, and uh, they really helped me so much when it comes to communicating with people, uh, when it comes to writing. And I mean, all this stuff was stuff that I didn't expect. Like, I mean, I knew that we would be helped by some people, but there were humble people that really just made my, my life way easier than, that, you know, it could have been at that moment because I didn't speak English at all. Right. So have you ever experienced discrimination or racism? Well, uh, middle school and high school, it goes around a little bit of like, you're black, you don't you're supposed to be in that kind of group and that kind of stuff. I mean, that's the what I can say when it comes to that. I mean, that, that that's one of the things like, yeah, I don't think it will ever go away. Uh, people will always, you know, kind of look at you a little bit different when you're black. And that was normal to me because uh, in high school I stopped caring. I just, you know, yeah. I was like, if I'm gonna have friends, I'm gonna have friends that doesn't, you know, look at me that way. That expects me to be to work hard 
and never use my race, like my my black skin to like uh, ask for things and do this and do bad things. Like I don't like I don't believe anybody should judge me or judge anybody by the race. Right. So was your idea of America exactly what you expected? I would say no, but then I would say I'm glad it is this way because no, I uh, I thought it was gonna be way easier. I thought it was gonna be simple. I was gonna live a life where I don't have to work, do nothing. But then I'm glad that I'm working hard because one day when I'm you know when I become a successful person, I will remember that uh, there's no such thing as life. You have to work for everything. So I believe this is a, like a lesson and a challenge that I was you know putting in the shoes of like taking responsibility and taking advantage of the opportunities that I was given. So that's what I would say. I mean, I was told that it was going to be easy, so I expect it to be easy, but it is different. It's different than you know, I expected. Oh, yeah. So have you ever tried to hide your home language or any of your original ethnic background? No, but I do, uh, I do try to adapt to the change. That's what my goal, one of my goals it is not to change who I am, it's to adapt to the society because I know uh, for me to become a successful person, I have to understand the society that I'm living in. I have to understand my surroundings. So I'm not trying to you know, change who I am, but I'm willing to do whatever it takes to become successful. So uh, when I'm home, I speak my language. When I'm on campus, I communicate in English. Uh, I don't carry myself around the campus as a poor innocent person who doesn't speak English because I do believe if I do that, I will lose lots of opportunities. Right. So do you have any foods, habits, or rituals that are specific to your culture that you still do in America? Yes. Uh, even today, I whenever I get home, I normally eat once a day. So when I get home, I cook the, my African food, which is like they cook beans or rice. Uh, they cook... Um, cassava, uh, they cook ugali, which is one of the popular food in Africa they eat. And those things, things that I grew up eating, uh, whenever I moved here, my parents hunt every source, try to find it. And they find this Asian place where they can go pick up the food for them, and I cook it every day. Like when I get home, I mean, my mom knows. She just say, hey, we got something to, uh, like right there in the cabin and get it. And I mean, it's an everyday thing that I eat. Uh, at the same time, I mean, I eat normal food. Like, I won't say, oh, since it's a pizza, it's American. It's like around American people food. I just eat it. I mean, I I just, I, I do, you know, dress a little bit of, like, how I would dress if I was my country. Yeah. I do communicate with people that are from my country just to keep that memory, you know, of who I am. So have you ever been made fun of for any original cultural traits that you still continue? Well... Uh, when I was in middle school and right when I graduated from high school, uh, my accent was kind of hard to understand, and I remember, you know, being made fun of. Fun of. But then, as as time passes, I overcome it. Just thinking, okay, I mean, this is something that I can work on. I worked on, you know, communicating better, and then as I started, you know, communicating, you know, in terms of like understanding the person who I'm talking to and them understanding me, it was just. It, be, it became different. It's more of like nobody you know, makes fun of me anymore. It's just normal to me. It's, I'm, I'm perfectly fine, I understand. All right. So uh, later on down the road when you have kids and stuff, um, are you going to teach them your native language or are you just going to teach them English as their first language? I would love to teach them. However, I'm losing it. <laughs> as the time passes, I, I came here when I was 13 years old. And to be honest with you, every second I'm on campus, I'm speaking English. And when I get home, it is hard for me to communicate with my parents. I have to say things in English and I have to translate it in Kiwi. <laughs> and it is that way. So, I mean, I want to. I really want to, you know, them to learn, like, as many languages because I speak about three or four languages. Oh, wow. And I really want them to understand, you know, those languages. But I don't believe that I will be able to teach them as well as that I was told. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm just going to try, you know, give them a little bit of my culture. And I want them to know who I am, where I was born, where I was from, you know, all that kind of stuff. 
and big, you know, big other families that are left in the back in our country. Maybe I'm gonna go visit with them, you know, take them out there, you know, visit, you know, give them a feel of like where I grew up and then why I am this way. So, I, I mean, I think those are the only base ways so far I can think of how I'm, I can get my kids to kind of you know understand who I am, because it is hard uh, to just explain it to them rather than taking them and let them experience it themselves because it's different. Right. Different. So, how would you feel about your children marrying outside of your ethnic group? I'm fine with it. I'm 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 a big believer in like I mean, nobody has a destiny to who they marry. Love is one of those things like all of a sudden you went to somebody that you didn't expect in your life. So, if they do happen to marry somebody, I'm all I'll always you know support them and look at them as my children. That's what I believe in. Like my parents told me that they said, hey. We don't really care who you marry to so just make sure you find the right person and just as long as you're happy you be happy and that's what I, I i stand up for i'm like it's up to them it's their happiness it's their life it's their choices i will give them opinion if i think it's wrong but i won't affect it i won't influence who they should be with pretty much but yeah all right well i think that wraps it up appreciate your time agisha yeah, nice to meet thank you, you for awesome. your interview